The Five Room Dungeon is one of the best ways to make incredibly engaging dungeons in D&D with a fraction of the effort. Each room in the Five Room Dungeon has a different focus designed to keep your players invested without unnecessary fluff. We'll go through the five rooms that give the five room dungeon its name and make one ourselves throughout this video so you can keep your players hooked. The first room is the entrance guardian. It serves as the first challenge for your party to pass. While the name suggests it would be a creature of some kind, that isn't a must. In fact, some of the most effective entrances involve no living creatures at all. It's something that sets the tone for your dungeon and gives your players a hint of the theming you're going for or more of what's to come. That could be a trap, a puzzle to navigate, some sort of skill challenge, a hidden entrance, or a social interaction for your party to surpass. It's critical that this room reflects the tone of the dungeon. A puzzle about sorting flowers by colour would not be a good idea for a dungeon about an orcus worshipping cult. And similarly, a beholder isn't likely to be guarding a goblin war camp. For our dungeon, we're going to be exploring an ancient library, lost to the ages. The entrance is going to be a gilded door that talks of those who seek knowledge, but also must give it freely. The puzzle is that the party need to part ways with information, books or scripts that the door deems worthy, at which point it will open, revealing a grand and well-kept hallway laden with books and scrolls and being tended to by unseen servants. Once the first challenge has been beaten and you've set the scene with that first breathtaking look at the inside of the dungeon, it may come time for your party to move forward to the next challenge the second room. This should represent a different challenge than the one you used. A puzzle followed by a puzzle is not a lot of fun for players who like combat or roleplay. So now it's time to give them something to sink their teeth into. Have something lurking in the dungeon, blocking the way, or a creature that's been inhabiting it for them to talk to. This is a chance to show the current state of affairs at the dungeon. What's changed since it was made or abandoned? If it was a monastery in the past and has been deserted, what creatures call it home now? After our party have made their way around that main hallway and come to the next door, they're going to come across the animated corpse of a past adventurer who had come in here many centuries ago seeking the mythic blade of the Grand Librarian Akshash. He might reveal some secrets about this place, perhaps about the plague that killed everyone here before even his time. The third room is a chance to raise the stakes for your party, give them something to cheer about, hope or a promise of some sort of reward, and then you pull the rug underneath them and watch the wine turn to ash in their mouths. This room serves to stop the party in their tracks, weaken them and make them question everything they've found out so far. It adds complexity and a depth to a dungeon crawl that prevents it from feeling one note. Common tricks and setbacks include giving the monster in that first or second room a final form, a betrayal of a trusted NPC, a challenging obstacle introduced into the dungeon, like some sort of skill challenge, closing walls, a pitfall trap dropped right beneath them, those sorts of things, or some hidden evil behind the magical item they've been looking for. In our dungeon, for example, that blade of Akshas is actually the source of the plague that wiped out the library, and now the party are afflicted too. They have the poisoned effect and are vulnerable to necrotic damage, weakening them for the fourth room. And that fourth room is the climax, the thing that your party will think about before going to bed after the session, the thing that they'll come back to on their drive to work in the morning, the thing they'll include in their wedding vows. This is it. The climax is the final arena or challenge that your party will face in the dungeon, an amalgamation of everything you've set up thus far. It could take the form of a boss battle against a formidable foe, a tentative or precarious social interaction that will determine the future of the arc or campaign, or a perilous skill challenge that could spell doom for one or more of your party members if not approached with care. It's critically important that this room gels with the rest of your dungeon and isn't just a big empty room for you to fight a boss in. One of the things that I learned from Curse of Strahd and Baldur's Gate 3 actually, is that not every boss interaction needs to end in a fight to the death. If your boss is capable of thought and speech, consider turning this into a tense social encounter with a high 
but not certain chance of it turning violent. Give your party a chance to talk. A high stakes social interaction can be as climactic, if not more so, than a combat encounter. And if they don't talk their way to the most favourable outcome, you can have your cake and eat it too. For our climax, the party will make their way into a central study where they will come across the Grand Librarian. Akshos is in fact the reanimated adventurer who greeted them at the start. He's a lich collecting knowledge to fuel his arcane abilities and ascend into godhood. And the false promise of a mythic blade serves to draw in unsuspecting adventurers. It's prey and test subjects. And finally, the in-game payoff. The fifth room is the reward for your party. And the first thing that usually comes to mind is a magical item or some money. But that's not the only thing you can give your party as a payout for completing this dungeon. Things like revelations about the arc or campaign, a plot hook to continue their adventure, finding a key NPC, or increased standing in a related faction or settlement work just as well. Though, I'd make sure to sprinkle in something material for your party to get excited about. For as killing or otherwise dealing with Akshash calls the plague, revealing that the Unseen Servants are other devoured individuals who came to the library in centuries past, lured by the false promises of the Mythic Blade. This could be linked to the wider story however you see fit. Maybe there's some information in the library that gleaned insight into the ancient evil that has recently been awakened in the wider world. Either way, the party may also have earned that mythic blade of the Grand Librarian, now rid of its curse. So just like that, we've got the building blocks and structure of an enthralling dungeon in just five rooms. Of course, each will be fleshed out with descriptions and other content to set the scene. An amazing final boss for such a dungeon would be a beholder. They can be the best villains for a campaign if run properly or a bit of a dud if used poorly. Check out this video to learn how to put a beholder into your game that will have your players absolutely hooked and mesmerized. Subscribe for more, like if you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.